Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 Excellence in Education Celebration. Tonight, we come together to celebrate the accomplishments, hard work, and leadership of these 18 District School Board of Niagara students. My name is Saloni Sharma, and I'll be your Master of Ceremony for tonight's celebration. I attend Westlane Secondary School and am the elected student trustee for the DSBN. In this role, I work to represent and advocate for student voice here at the board. We'll begin tonight's celebration with the land acknowledgement followed by O Canada. We begin this gathering by acknowledging the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. And acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. welcome our Director of Education, Mr. Warren Hoshisaki, to deliver greetings from the board. Hello everyone. It's been a pleasure to be with you to celebrate your secondary achievements at the DSPN. I want you to know that carrying a heavy academic load during secondary school is impressive enough, but you've all done so much more. You balanced your studies with other important activities, such as volunteering to help people in the community, doing online mentoring and tutoring, and many of you worked at jobs as well. All this during a global pandemic. With the vaccine, hopefully, the start of your next chapter in your lives will be much more normal than the one you finished this year. The race to create the COVID vaccine is a great metaphor for the challenges and thinking that will support your continued success. Most people think that it was Pfizer or Moderna who cracked the code paving the way for the development of the vaccine but we actually owe our gratitude to Turkish scientist, Caitlin Karako, whose life research was focused on synthesizing mRNA or messenger RNA. mRNA is the essential ingredient in the COVID vaccine that transforms the cells in our body to help us fight the COVID-19 virus. Without Caitlin Karako, we would not have COVID vaccine. With such important work, you'd think she'd known all over the world but that's not the case at all. In fact, she lost her job because her university wasn't happy with the results. They didn't feel they were seeing enough progress with her work. They demoted her and eventually let her go. But Karako knew she was on to something. She believed she would find the key to the mRNA to unlock the body's potential to fight disease. So rather than giving up, she worked every evening late into the night to find funding to support her research. She once said, every night I was working, it was grant, grant, grant. And I came back always, no, no, no. At the time, her research was considered too radical, too risky, and she continued working. She refined her experiments, 
collected more data, and kept pushing. What kept Caraco going? Scientists like Caraco don't consider a lack of results to be an error or a mistake. Instead, they look at what they've learned and how that informs their next steps. Was Caraco making large discoveries and huge gains? No, she was making small steps to help her get closer and closer to her goal of uncovering the secrets of mRNA. The message is never give up, ever. As you always know, success doesn't come from the grand gestures and the huge leaps that you take in life. It comes from consistency, making small gains, one tiny step at a time. It comes from believing that you accomplish what you set out to do, and it comes from being able to motivate yourself to keep going when it seems like you are the only one on that path. You will all have your own mRNA that will challenge you and your commitment, motivation, and consistency, your resilience and perseverance will be the key to your success. I congratulate you all for what you have accomplished so far and the success you are sure to achieve in the future. Thank you, Mr. Hoshisaki, for your words of inspiration and encouragement. I would now like to welcome Ms. Shannon Smith, President of the OSSTF District 22. Good evening and welcome. I'm Shannon Smith, and I represent all of the secondary teachers and occasional teachers in DSBN secondary schools. I'm excited to be here tonight to celebrate some of the best that our high schools have to offer. Tonight is not just about academic success, although all of our winners certainly have that. What makes these winners exceptional is all of the other things that they do. They are involved in clubs, activities, and other things within their school and also the community. They are leaders, mentors, and positive role models for others. They are outstanding in their pursuits, which is why they were chosen to receive this award by their teachers. Speaking of teachers, tonight we are pleased to have each winner introduced by the teacher of their choosing, one who has had a positive impact on their life in high school. Tonight, you will see the importance of building relationships in a school building. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy hearing about all of the amazing accomplishments of these award winners. There is no limit to their potential, and we look forward to hearing about their continued success as they start the next chapter in their lives. Thank you, Shannon. We are very grateful for the ongoing support and partnership between OSSTF and the DSBN. We will now begin with the award part of the evening. Excellence in Education recipients will be presented in alpha order by school. Principals will introduce each recipient, as well as a teacher representing the award winner. Each recipient will be mailed a portfolio, a photograph, as well as a $500 bursary. Once again, congratulations and enjoy the show. Good evening, I'm Kim Crothers, very proud principal of A.N. Meyer Secondary School. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce Jocelyn Siriani, who will introduce this year's award winner for excellence in education, our own Ellie Petrak. Ellie is a student who is truly deserving of the Excellence in Education Award this year. She exemplifies the characteristics that come to mind of a student who readily embraces everything the educational experience has to offer. As her English teacher, I've watched her flourish and develop as a writer and as a communicator. She is the student in the class that is the connector. She brings her peers together and shares her ideas with enthusiasm and reflective commentary. In terms of her contributions to Meyer and the community, her contributions are endless. She's been an active member on student council, the Interact Volunteer Club, the school choir, book club, the Cappy's critics team, and has extensive involvement in both the drama and music productions. This school year, Ellie readily embraced a new role with the student advisory team. She assumed a leadership position by promoting school spirit in planning spirit weeks, writing and reading daily announcements, and executing virtual activities for students. Ellie readily embraces the challenges of seeking creative ways to connect students together. She's been an organizer and a participant in yearly coffee house productions and the year-end showcase of all the arts the Meyer Mosaic. In the Niagara Falls community, Ellie works at the public library as a page. Here, she's had the opportunity to promote literacy skills with new readers, encouraging young children on their path to learning. 
This opportunity allowed Ellie to provide a safe environment to help children develop these essential skills. Ellie, Ellie's community involvement connects back to the Interact Club based in our school. Here, she had the opportunity to volunteer time at the soup kitchen, and this experience has taught her the importance of teamwork, commitment, and dedication to helping others in our community. Ellie has been an honor roll student throughout high school, taking an academically demanding timetable. She is the recipient of the Niagara Falls Student Spirit Award this year from the Rotary Club for her volunteer efforts. In addition, she was a semi-finalist and will receive a McCall McBain Scholarship from the McCall McBain Foundation. Ellie will be attending the University of Guelph to pursue a Bachelor of Arts in Science this fall. The diversity of the courses she will take speaks to her unique interests and future career aspirations. Ellie is truly deserving of this award and it is my honor to introduce her. Hi, my name is Sandra Orr, Vice Principal at Beamsville Secondary School. I'm very proud to announce this year's recipient of the Excellence in Education Award, Kirthana Shrikant. I would like to introduce Jennifer Corbett, who will be speaking to the amazing accomplishments of this wonderful young lady. Hi, my name is Jen Corbett, and I am honored to present BDSS's Excellence in Education winner, Kirthana Shrikant. Having met Kirthana this past September, it did not take long for her to impress me as both a student and a human being in general. I could go on about her academic accomplishments, which include an impressive 98% average, but there's far more to Kirthana than academics. Kirthana has been on the student council since grade nine, and she's currently one of our co-presidents. In working with her as a staff advisor, I've noticed that she genuinely wants to make the school experience a positive one for the entire student body. Never deterred by the limitations set by the pandemic, Kirithana led the student council in getting creative to run virtual events, which included school-wide challenges, stress relieving activities, spirit weeks, and a mental health month Jamboard activity. She's also organizing a virtual presentation through Pastones for both students and parents. When ideas are suggested in council meetings, Kirithana stops to consider whether they're equitable. And then she uses that as an opportunity to educate others on the importance of viewing possible events through that lens. She also values the voice of the student body, sending out polls as a way to gauge their interest in potential initiatives. Kirithana has immersed herself in extracurricular life at BDSS. She has been on the school reach team, the jazz and concert bands, and Cabby's theater critics. As a critic, Four of her reviews were selected to be sent for publishing in the St. Catherine Standard, and she was nominated for Best Critic last year. Kirithana has taken her leadership and public spirit into the community as a volunteer at the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital and the Lincoln Museum. At the museum, she was a youth accessibility leader, obtaining a $10,000 grant to increase the accessibility of the new museum being built. Her contributions have not gone unnoticed as she was awarded the Town of Lincoln's Good Citizen Award in 2018 and has been hired at the museum. Kirithana has combined her leadership and critical thinking skills with her love of history as a curator of multiple exhibits at the museum. Her enthusiasm for this work is evident when she talks about the different exhibits that she's been a part of. She told me how cool her last experience was as it involved taking submissions from members in the town about their memories of the town. Kirithana has been making an impression at BDSS since grade nine. It's no surprise to me that she was the recipient of the Kristen French Award in grade 10, or to hear how highly other students speak of her. She has been contributing to the school culture and the greater community, all with humility and grace. Kirthana, you should be extremely proud of everything that you have accomplished during your time at BDSS. You are truly deserving of this award, and it was a pleasure to get to know you this year. I wish you all the best as you begin the next chapter in your life in the Commerce Program at Carleton University. All the best. Hello, I'm Tammy Zonneville, Principal at Welland Centennial. And I'm thrilled to introduce this year's Excellence in Education Award winner from Centennial as Evie Libby. Congratulations, Evie, from all the staff at Centennial. This is such a well-deserved recognition for you. Joining us to speak on Evie's behalf is Mr. Jan Marais, French immersion teacher at Centennial. Good morning, uh, my name is uh, Jan Marais and it's my honor to introduce to you the winner of uh, Excellence in Education uh, for Welland Centennial. And uh, with no surprise, it's uh, Evie Levy, uh, our uh, Prime Minister, uh, who did an incredible job uh, this year 
and last year too as a deputy prime minister actually uh, to uh, keep all the uh, the students uh, involved uh, with the school life uh, during these uh, tough time uh, always available uh, always with a smile uh, always ready to uh, help uh, her uh, peers her uh, like the younger students too uh, she was uh, also a math tutor for our school uh, a member of the uh, cheerleading squad and uh, one of the two uh, representative of our school to the uh, student trustee Senate. She is very, very proud of uh, her work as a, a air cadet. Uh, she is uh, part of the drill team uh, and uh, she teaches uh, ground school to uh, younger uh, cadets. She actually oversees uh, 55 uh, members of the uh, air cadet. Uh, she was, uh, last uh, summer, she was selected as one of the 60 um, air cadets to uh, uh, obtain her glider pilot's license. And for that, she worked uh, really, really hard. Uh, typical day for a flight line is about, about 10 to 12 hours. So uh, she was so dedicated to uh, this uh, uh, work. She uh, uh, finally uh, started uh, Inspire Her Niagara, which is a youth-led organization with the aim of motivating and empowering uh, high school females within the Niagara region. And uh, she's actually in the executive team lead uh, on this uh, organization and she supervises uh, and mentors her own team of girls. Um, at the end, uh, we're gonna miss her. Uh, she uh, accepted uh, uh, the uh, Med Plus program at Brock. So uh, I know she will do uh, great uh, uh, work there. And uh, so, félicitations, Evie. Bonne chance l'année prochaine. Congratulations. Good luck next year. And uh, we're gonna all miss you. I'm Lisa Nazar, the secondary principal at DSB Academy, which is a grade six to 12 school. And I would like to congratulate Aaliyah Aragon, who is our Excellence in Education recipient for 2021. Congratulations, Aaliyah. And I'd also like to introduce Laura Shelton, who is a program leader at our school, who will be speaking to you about Aaliyah. I am so honored to be speaking with you today about Aaliyah Aragon. My name is Laura Shelton. Canada and World Studies, Social Science and Humanities Program Leader, and CERT at the DSBN Academy. Aaliyah Aragon is excellence in education and lives up to all those things that come to mind when you think about who an excellence in education winner should be. She is academically first in her class, the 98% average, and winner of 10 subject awards over her four years in high school. She is involved in her school community, contributing to many clubs and activities, such as the Yearbook Committee, Healthy Schools Encore, Mock Trial, and both the badminton and basketball teams. She is a positive and charismatic leader who perseveres through challenges, always keeping her end goal in mind. She is a kind, considerate, inquisitive, positive, and ambitious student who has a bright future ahead of her. What has set Aaliyah apart, and I am most proud to be telling you about her, is her commitment to equity, social justice, and to improving the world for those who come after her. When Aaliyah sees injustice in her community, she moves to action. For example, Aaliyah saw a poster about the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. She wanted to make a difference and draw attention to gender violence. She decided then to run the White Ribbon Campaign at the DSBN Academy to remember the Montreal Massacre. When Aaliyah saw that there was a need for students in her school to have healthy lunches without financial burden, she volunteered her time to plan, package, and distribute daily options for those students. She is committed to making sure the voices of people of color are heard and listened to. This year, Aaliyah wanted to amplify those voices at the DSBN Academy, and she along with three of her classmates created Brave Space, a group for students to share their experiences as people of color and to support each other. Aaliyah believes that education is a tool for change. She once wrote that the importance of social justice is taking accountability for the world to ensure that everyone who succeeds you has equal opportunities to learn, grow, and live. Through Brave Space, Aaliyah was passionate and focused on diversity education and spreading awareness on racialized issues. 
not only wanting to make a difference for her peers, but also concerned about the experience of future students. Her post-secondary plans align with her commitment to equity. Next year, she will be attending Brock University to complete a degree in public health administration, accelerated into masters. She intends to enter into a career in which she promotes equity in public health, focusing on racial equity and anti-discrimination in healthcare. When she continues on next year, she will be receiving the Brock Principal Scholarship, the Branscombe Family Foundation Scholarship, and the Brock Entrance Scholarship. I feel honored that Aaliyah chose me to speak on her behalf as she is someone who has given me so much hope and inspiration for the future. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jana Sargent, Principal of E.L. Crosley, and it gives me great pleasure to congratulate Sydney Dusep, this year's Excellence in Education Award winner. Sydney is a kind and generous student who leads by example and elevates those around her. Here now to share more with you about our remarkable Sydney is Jennifer Benson, E.L. Crosley's drama teacher. Witty, warm, whimsical, creative, compassionate, collaborative. These are just a few of the words that come to my mind when I think of Sydney Doucette. I first met Sydney four years ago in a grade nine drama class and she was so shy. In fact, she says she took drama class to become more comfortable and confident with herself as a person. This statement to me speaks to her character. Stepping through that door as a shy grade nine student into a performance class, meeting a personal fear head on is an act of great courage. Nothing stopped her. She stepped into even greater performance risks. She was first on the junior improv team for a year and then she found herself on ELC's competitive senior improv team. Her quick wittedness, intelligence, keen observational and language ability surely helped pull our team to a silver medal win at the regional tournament. She was a joy to behold on stage. She had conquered her fears. Of her experience with the improv team, Sydney says, the improv team quickly became like a second family to me and I would not be who I am without it. Improv encouraged me to be creative, spontaneous, and outspoken in my ideas. Outspoken she is, and passionately so. Her English teacher, John Anderson, comments that she often elevates class discussion with her distinct viewpoints. I could count on Sydney to be honest. She was my go-to person and often the class spokesperson. Melissa Amadio, her phys ed teacher, says that Sydney is determined to fight and speak for the rights of all students and marginalized groups within our population. While her impact and versatility is evident through her participation in classes, on the link crew, in athletics, and in the film Oddity Club, she is also very actively involved outside the school and say it on stage, a new seniors and youth intergenerational theater program launched by the town of Pelham. Creative lead Colleen Kenyon says of her that from the time she entered the room for the first conversation circle, she has contributed energy and imagination to the projects that the group has produced. With confidence and conviviality, she has been a true team player, respectful of others and respected in return. The seniors involved in the productions have become more comfortable interacting with teens, largely because of their positive experience with Sydney and the other students with whom they've collaborated in the program. Sydney seems to understand where you take risk, step into the unknown, you reap rich return. She attributes flourishing as a creative writer to volunteerism in the Say It program. Sid, wherever you go, you spread honesty, integrity, light, and heart. <laughs> I have no doubt that when you head out into the world and challenge it, the world will indeed become a better place. McMaster University's English and Anthropology program We'll be lucky to have you. Keep saying yes and. Woo. Good evening. My name is Rosemary Jellink, principal of Eastdale Secondary School in Welland. Congratulations to this year's Excellence in Education recipient, Stephen Zhang. Stephen, you are most worthy of this honor. Here to say a few words about Stephen's accomplishments is his teacher, Mr. Joe Orlando. Over to you, Joe. Hello, my name is Joseph Orlando, and I have the privilege of teaching math and science at Eastdale Secondary School in Welland, Ontario. Eastdale is a small, tight-knit community, and the teachers there have the opportunity to teach the same students many different classes over their high school career. For this reason, I've had the chance to get to know Stephen Zhang as a student and as a person, and I think I'm as qualified as anyone to explain why he's such a great candidate for this year's Excellence in Education Award. 
Stephen is a truly gifted student. He has an academic average of 97%. He's been on the honor roll every year at high school. And of the 27 classes he's completed at Eastdale, he has taken the top mark in 10 of them, ranging from academic classes, such as math, science, and English, twice, to electives, like physical education and music. Stephen's work is consistently carefully done, creative, and a showcase for his intelligence and his attention to detail. Stephen is the kind of student who works on a project until it's perfect. But St Stephen's work is also a showcase for his creativity. Stephen chooses difficult topics to cover, and whether it's a chemistry lab or a difficult piece of music he's learning or a statistics project, Stephen puts every ounce of himself into his work to make sure it's a reflection of his best possible effort. Stephen isn't just a gifted academic, he's a pillar of Eastdale's school community. He's served on student council, he acts as a DSPN student trustee, and he has volunteered at open houses, grade eight days, carnivals, fun fairs, art festivals, all of the activities that make going to school more than just attending class. Music in particular has been one of Stephen's focuses, and he has played flute in the school band, been on the Arts Council, and helped to plan and execute our winter and spring concerts each year. Stephen is also a pillar of the broader Welland community. When he's not at home working on school, playing video games, or watching anime with his friends, Stephen can be found working at his family's restaurant, right there in town. Stephen served on the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee, and he studies Taekwondo and works out at a local gym. Now, at the end of his high school career, after an unprecedented year, graduation is upon us. And Stephen's classmates, peers, chose him as the valedictorian. It's not a surprise. When he's done at Eastdale, Stephen will move on to the University of Toronto, St. George's College, to study computer science and eventually move into a career in data science. Eastdale's loss is the University of Toronto's gain. I asked a few of his peers and teachers to describe Stephen in one word. They came up with a great list. Quick-witted, prodigious, committed, clear-sighted, determined, and intelligent. Now, it's not possible to sum somebody up in just one word, or even in three minutes. Stephen is an excellent student, a kind and caring friend, and a truly compassionate member of his community. But I would say excellence seems as good a word as any to try to sum all of those traits up. And so it is my privilege to present Stephen Zhang with this year's Excellence in Education Award. Congratulations, Stephen. Hi, my name is Sharon Burns, and I am the proud principal of Eden High School. I would like to congratulate Charlotte Fritz on her award tonight. I would also like to introduce you to Andrew White, the teacher who is presenting Charlotte to you. Hi, I'm Andrew White. I'm a teacher at Eden High School, and I would like to introduce Eden High School's Excellence of Education Award winner, Charlotte Fritz. I've known Charlotte ever since she was in my uh, grade nine class many years ago, and very quickly I realized that she just had an amazing work ethic, a desire to learn, and was just an all around uh, lovely student to have. And it comes as no surprise to any of our teachers that you know, she went on to achieve 90s in all of her courses, and she has risen to be one of the top students in, in an extremely talented pool of graduates, so over 200 graduates at, at Eden High School. She's pursued a variety of different academic pursuits outside of the classroom, uh, one of them being uh, competing and winning at the provincial and national level for her geographic research. In fact, here I am at J.C. Park, which uh, she identified as one of the key habitats for coyotes in an urban environment as part of that project, along with her partner, Alexi Haslam. She also conducted studies uh, for the Osteoporosis Society. She uh, worked as an advisory committee member uh, with Brock University, and she competed with a global engineering challenge at the University of uh, Toronto. She's also uh, been very engaged in the school uh, environment as a member of lots of different clubs, everything from DECA to the math club, geography club, uh, yearbook, uh, model parliament, and the link crew. And with the DECA uh, program, she eventually rose to become the president of the, uh, the club, and she went on 
with the uh, the club to compete at the provincial level and place in the top 10 each year uh, with DECA. And in addition, she was, of course, the Canadian Geographic winner for her school. In her spare time, yes, her spare time, uh, she did lots of things in her local community too. She liked to volunteer as a uh, coach for dance and for cheerleading. She loved to learn how to swim and uh, take on some jazz and ballet. And then, of course, she'll be missing being a member of our Spiritual Life uh, Center at Eden High School. Engineering is the next step for, for Charlotte as she goes to the University of Toronto. She's the recipient of the Dean's Award of Merit Scholarship. All the best in your future studies, Charlotte. Congratulations on an incredible uh, four years at, at Eden, and we really look forward to hearing from you as you uh, engineer a better world for all of us. Hello, my name is Terry Thompson and I'm the principal here at Governor Simcoe Secondary School. I would like to congratulate the Excellence in Education Award winner, Jane Bellafleur. Christy Lockyer, a teacher here at Governor Simcoe, will be speaking on Jane's behalf. For the last 15 months, we have been in a global pandemic and the daily news certainly can be depressing and get us down. Some of you may be familiar with John Krasinski from The Office. Using his celebrity platform, he created a series called Some Good News, which celebrates and honors positive actions to remind, highlight, and encourage us to remember that there are good people in the world. Personally, while I enjoyed his show, I was fortunate to have my own Some Good News every day because Jane Bellafleur was at Governor Simcoe. I am but beyond honored and excited to introduce and celebrate her today. Why I am inspired by Jane. Like many recognize tonight, she is a high achieving academic student with a focus in science and the environment. She was the top student in her grade every year at Simcoe and received several outstanding Our House awards, recognizing effort, passion and achievement. Her contributions to school life include student council leadership, the Eco Club and the Simcoe Outreach Society, where Jane led yearly food drives, Rankin Cancer Runs, and a variety of other community-based initiatives. Jane led and facilitated a presentation about residential schools to promote reconciliation and helped organize a fundraiser for the Gord Downey and Cheney Wenjack Fund. Jane was also selected to be a part of the Brock University Science Mentorship Program, where she developed a research project to determine the impact of forest management on trees. And Jane did all of this while working a part-time job. Jane has contributed in such a meaningful, impactful way while at Governor Simcoe, but the really amazing thing to note is her spirit. Jane is positive, inclusive, thoughtful, caring, kind, and optimistic. She is an absolute joy to work with. Jane had many offers, but has chosen to go to the University of Guelph for environmental science, where she received the Academic Leadership Scholarship in addition to an entrance scholarship. She chose environmental science because in her own words, Ever since I was a child, I loved nature and being outdoors. My interest has grown and evolved into a strong passion for the environment and sustainability. This has inspired my long-term goal to reduce the impact of climate change. If anyone can save the planet and make a difference in our world and the lives of the people around her, it's Jane Bellafleur. And for me, that is some good news. Congratulations, Jane. Hello, my name is Fred Lowe's and I'm the proud principal at Greater Fort Erie Secondary School. On behalf of the entire GFest faculty, I want to congratulate this year's Excellence in Education Award winner, Adam Whale. At this time, I'd like to turn things over to GFest teacher, Mr. Mike Smith, to share a few words about Adam. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Smith, and I've had the privilege of teaching Adam for the last two years at GFest. Adam studied grade 11 law, grade 12 law, and grade 12 politics with me. 
During those courses, he's demonstrated high academic achievement, curiosity, and he's excelled during presentations and debates. I think he's so successful in these areas because he puts the time in to master his material, but most importantly, he listens and validates what his classmates have to say. Uh, in all of his coursework, he leads by example. He speaks with conviction and he's not afraid to be wrong. The product of all of this hard work was four years on the honor roll. Adam's also an excellent runner and clearly is, has lungs that most of us could only dream of. He excels in 3000 meter and cross country events. He's won zone competitions for cross country for the last three years. In grade nine, he placed 16th at offset for cross country. Grade 10, 13th. Grade 11, 7th from first year seniors and 33rd overall in the province. In the 3000 meter, he placed 9th at OFSA. Adam frequently shares his time working with elementary school runners at his track club, taking them under his wing and offering his support and encouragement. He never leaves the finish line until the last runner comes through, always offering high fives and hugs to all the other competitors. Adam clearly understands that real competition isn't about beating anyone else. It's about beating your own expectations and celebrating those victories. Somehow with all of this training and practice, Adam still finds time to volunteer. He's been a staple at the Garrison Road Church over the last several years, volunteering his time in a myriad of ways. He helps out at Stevensville Public School, scorekeeping for their volleyball games. While some students struggle, complain and flounder to get their 40 volunteer hours required for graduation, Adam has somehow racked up 155 hours and half of that during COVID. Oh, and did I mention he also plays piano? Adam is gonna be attending Queens University next year to study a BA program consisting of politics, philosophy and law. His pursuit of excellence in academics and athletics has been rewarded with a scholarship to this prestigious institution. Adam has had dreams of attending law school for a very long time, but has recently discovered that he may also be interested in teaching. All of this shows me that Adam is planning on using his university experience the right way, to learn, to think, to explore, to find out what career path will allow him to be his best self. Congratulations to you, Adam. You've earned this. Hi, I'm Matt Miller, principal of Grimsby Secondary School. I'd like to congratulate Batul Azdemir as the winner of the Excellence in Education Award from Grimsby. And I would like to introduce Mrs. Jessica Drake, who will be giving you more information about Batul. She's an excellent student and we're very proud of her. So delighted to introduce you to Batul Azdemir, our Excellence in Ed winner at Grimsby Secondary School this year. Batul is just an all around awesome person and an exemplary student. She is kind, genuine, and humble. She gives back to her school and broader community through involvement in extracurriculars and community service. And she has the motivation and skills to persevere and succeed through any barriers. Let me take a few moments to tell you a bit about Batul. Batul was born and raised in Turkey until she was in grade four. In grade five, her family moved to Spain where she attended mostly English speaking classes, but she knew hardly any English when she arrived. Batul remembers those first months and the feeling of not being able to communicate with others. Imagine trying to make new friends in a brand new country without being able to speak the same language. Of course, her English skills improved quickly, but Batula feels that this was one of the challenges in her life that helped her grow the most and gave her a more mature perspective, even though she was still quite young. Batula came to Canada with her family when she was in grade eight. She attended Smith Public School in Grimsby the first year and then went on to attend grades nine through 12 at GSS. If you met Batul in the hallway at GSS, you would notice her friendly smile and kind demeanor. She treats everyone with respect and always has a positive attitude. If you followed Batul to one of her classes, you would notice that she has a great interest in her education and puts in 100% effort. Batul told me that if you look at education as an opportunity to grow for yourself and not for your parents or teachers, then you can make the most of it. After class, you might go attend math club with Batul where she is a student leader. She could tell you about how she presented a PD session to a classroom full of teachers in 2019 about the student-led math club she helped organize. You might also like to attend the prefects meeting, White Pine Club, choir, or reach team with her. And like me, you would wonder how she manages to fit all of those things in. After school, you might see Batul heading to the Grimsby Public Library, where Batul volunteers and works helping community members learn how to use various technologies 
and engaging young children in fun activities. Batul also volunteered at the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital, where she helped patients and had conversations with them. When COVID came along, it did not stop Batul. Last summer, Batul saw on Instagram that one of the speakers from the Central Ontario Leadership Seminar that she attended in grade 10 was looking for help in organizing a virtual leadership conference. Batul signed up and worked with other students from Canada and the U.S. to organize the conference called Stuck at Home, and it attracted around 500 students. I just don't have enough time to tell you about the Model UN conference Batul attended in 2020 or the Turkish Day program she organized a few years ago. I also could not begin to list her hobbies, including music and art. What I can tell you, though, is that Batul, with her beautiful personality, positive attitude, involvement in extracurriculars, community service, and dedication to academics, is very deserving of the Excellence in Education Award she is receiving this evening. On behalf of all of the teachers at Grimsby Secondary School, we are proud of you and we wish you all the best next year as you attend the Life Sciences Program at McMaster University. Congratulations, Batul. Hi, my name is Helena Trichu and I'm the principal of Laura Secord Secondary School. I'd like to congratulate all of the Excellence in Education Award recipients this evening, and in particular, our very own Jenna Cowan. Here to introduce Jenna is her teacher mentor, Tracy Thorpe. Hello. I'm Tracy Thorpe from Laura Secord Secondary School, and I have the privilege of introducing to you our Excellence in Education Award recipient, Jenna Cowan. I've taught Jenna drama and musical theater and directed her in a number of productions during her years at Secord, and I know firsthand what a hardworking, talented, dedicated, and high-achieving student she is. From early morning choir, dance team, and drumline rehearsals, to her work on student union, to evening and weekend drama rehearsals, not to mention all her volunteer work and extracurriculars outside of school, all while maintaining excellent grades in all of her classes. She is truly remarkable. I want to talk a bit first about Jenna's involvement in the arts. Jenna's a member of our DNA Dance program, as well as our SHSM program for arts and culture. She's an accomplished dancer, having won many awards, and has been on numerous dance teams at Secord, both as a dancer and as a dance team captain. Her talent and skill as a performer goes beyond dance, though. She's performed in two of our musicals, an NTS Drama Festival production and one of our drama nights, showcasing her abilities not just as a dancer, but as a singer and an actor. Working in the arts requires creativity, perseverance, and an ability to work collaboratively, and Jenna excels in all of these areas. She takes on challenges with the most open, positive, and optimistic attitude that I've seen, and we work a lot of long hours and things can get pretty frustrating sometimes, but that never faces Jenna. She's always there with a smile, ready to go and ready to help anyone who needs it. This is part of what makes Jenna an excellent leader. Not only did she demonstrate her leadership skills as captain on dance teams, but she also served on Secord's student union and was vice president last year. Jenna shared her knowledge and experience as a mentor to incoming grade nines in our junior mentorship program, helped out with open houses and grade eight day, and she works as a teacher's assistant at her dance studio. Not only is she creative and talented and a great leader, she has a heart for others and does an incredible amount of volunteering outside of school for organizations such as the Rankin Cancer Run, Red Roof Retreat, Terry Fox Run, and many others. With so much on her plate, Jenna was still able to maintain high honor standing throughout her high school years and be awarded numerous subject awards for having top marks. She puts the same effort and dedication into her studies that she does in everything else. Top academic excellence and a heart for helping others, it's no wonder she's planning on going into medicine. Jenna will be attending Queen's University for Health Sciences and hopes to go into dermatology. This is one outstanding young lady. It is my honor to introduce to you Laura Secord's recipient of the Excellence in Education Award, Jenna Cowan. Hi, my name is Christine Waller, Principal of the Lifetime Learning Center. It is my pleasure to congratulate our Excellence in Education Award recipient, Chupomika Oporo Abraham. And now, here is Allison Langley, Chupomika's teacher, to tell you more about him. Lifetime Learning Center, DSBN School for Adult Learners, is very proud to present Chukwuemeka Okoro Abraham as our Excellence in Education Award winner. Chukwuemeka was born and raised in Nigeria and graduated from Albia State University in Uturu with a degree in History and International Relations. He often talks about the unrest and corruption in his home country and after being randomly stopped by military personnel and fearing for his life, he decided he had to leave Nigeria. 
In February of 2018, at the age of 45, he and his family immigrated to Canada with hopes of more freedom, safety, and opportunities for his children. Starting all over in a new environment was challenging, yet all that he felt was gratitude for the assistance that they received as they settled in and began experiencing winter for the very first time. Chukwu and Mecca started volunteering with Habitat for Humanity and working at the Book Depot. Feeling unfulfilled with his job, he decided to go back to school and his motivation to help people in need due to illness, especially seniors, led him to the PSW program. He has achieved the highest class average in both the academic and clinical components. He demonstrates an excellent understanding of the physical and psychological changes when living with an illness or with aging, and he is always eager to learn more in areas like palliative care. Chukwe Mecca is an extremely helpful and available support to his peers. He is the calm leader of the class by demonstrating excellence at all times, that having high standards is important, and that showing compassion is vital. Because of his exceptional student clinical performance and the dire need for PSWs due to the COVID-19 outbreaks, Chukwu Emeka was hired as an intern PSW. With no hesitation, he enthusiastically began working while continuing as a full-time student. It has been even more challenging to do the job of a PSW during the pandemic with the increasing isolation, illness, and death of the residents. He states that with every shift, he gets closer to them in order to better understand their needs and improve their quality of life. He humbly admits that he's often thanked by his residents and that they smile and seem happy when they realize that he is their PSW. In Nigeria, he explains there is no care system for the elderly and if they don't have family nearby, many suffer and die alone. He says that seeing the long-term care system here has been life-changing for him. He is now able to turn his kindness into a career. Chukwu Mecca is now a full-fledged PSW with the region of Niagara. Our future is in good hands with caregivers like Chukwu and Mecca. Greetings, my name is Paul Taylor and I am the principal at Port Colborne High School. It's my great honor and privilege to congratulate Hannah Walker as Port High's Excellence in Education Award recipient for this year. And as many accomplishments and community efforts have persevered through the pandemic to the benefit of all blue bears and our surrounding community. I'd like to introduce Mr. Jonathan Fletcher, who's Port High's program leader for Canadian and World Studies and our resident expert of all things geography to share more with you about Hannah and the compelling reasons that make her an outstanding Excellence in Education Award recipient. Hi, I decided I would write this as a letter to Hannah since this award is for her. Dear Hannah, congratulations, you did it. To begin, I want to let you know that I am incredibly honored that you asked me to give this short speech. It's not every day that I get to introduce the valid Victorian two-time provincial GIS skills champion for her Excellence in Education Award celebration. It's been four years since you walked into my geography classroom as a quiet grade nine student. Your desire to excel in school was obvious from the beginning. During that semester, I noticed that you were always extremely focused. I'm grateful to have witnessed that dedication to your studies and your community grow stronger with each passing year and each geography class you signed up for. For instance, after the grade nine trip to the Walker Living Campus, you took what you learned and used it for your final project, which ended up winning third place in a national mapping competition. It was due to this focus that I recruited you to be part of the skills competition for geographic information systems. Your drive and determination told me that you were going to excel and set a new benchmark for Port High students to strive for. I wasn't wrong. We are also proud to see you and your partners win the Ontario Technological Skills Competition gold medal in digital mapping, both in grade 10 and again in grade 12. Those are some of my proudest moments as a teacher. Hannah, while grades are important, it was great to see how you found balance in your life as a student and time to excel at so many other things like playing music and competing in athletics, including ultimate and basketball while working part-time. It has been a privilege to mentor you in your chosen career path to study geography and geographical information systems at the University of Guelph. 
I understand that it was during my spatial technologies class when you helped do the land survey and mapping for the DSBN Adventure Campus that you made your choice to become a geographer. It must have been all the walking through mud, wrangling snakes, or creating a map that is now being used daily by the DSBN Adventure Campus that sold you on your career pathway. You did a great job in student council from when you started at Port Colborne High to now as a respected leader of the student body and council president, and during a pandemic no less. Your confidence in public speaking has definitely improved over the years. Do you think it had anything to do with when you spoke to 1100 GIS professionals at the largest GIS conference in Canada? Hannah, it was great to have you come along on the student march break trip to Europe in 2019. You were part of so many great memories with your peers, visiting places like the top of mountain in Switzerland, Cinque Terre in Italy, and medieval castles in France and Barcelona. That adventure seems so long ago, but I know you'll have lots of traveling left to do as you leave your mark in this world, much like the impact you've had on your peers here at Port Coburn High School and in the Port Coburn High School community. Congratulations, Hannah. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Maddie Crawford as Sir Winston Churchill's 2021 winner of our Excellence in Education Award. Maddie has been indispensable this year with helping me run our weekly Team Outlook morning announcements. I could go on to describe the countless volunteer activities she has pursued, her leadership within the school, or her outstanding grades, but I've heard Mr. Kitchen's speech and he does a wonderful job of summarizing why everyone at Sir Winston admires and respects Maddie. I will turn it to Mr. Kitchen and end by saying how lucky we've been to have Maddie and how proud she and her parents must be. Hi there, I'm Mr. Kitchen from Sir Winston and I would like to thank the Excellence in Education Committee for allowing me to do a lovely thing and that is to spend a couple of minutes talking about one of my favorite people, Maddie Crawford. It's no surprise to me that Maddie was selected by our staff as our Excellence in Ed winner since for the last four years Maddie's been impressing everyone that she works with. I first got to know Maddie in her junior years as a member of student council, uh, and she made an immediate impact. Often junior students need quite a bit of encouragement to speak out at meetings or present ideas, but uh, Maddie had both the ideas and the, the confidence to communicate them right from the get-go. She stayed on council throughout her years, and she spent this last year as president of the school. This was no easy task because COVID was well upon us when she chose to run for president, but she met all the challenges superbly. Uh, she met every deadline, she crossed every T, she never stumbled in her duties. In fact, I really enjoyed the conversations that I would have with Maddie because they always went like this. I would say something like, Maddie, we gotta make this phone call. And she would just say, stop Mr. Kitchen, we already made it. Or I'd say, you know, we gotta, we gotta do an Instagram post. And she'd say, Mr. Kitchen, we made that yesterday. Um, every time I spoke with her, my to-do list shortened by about half, and that was always an impressive thing to benefit from. Maddie's true impact, though, came uh, with the students, and um, this is why she's so important, Mr. Winston. A lot of the traditions that council would normally do weren't feasible this year because of COVID, but it didn't stop Maddie from finding new ways of keeping a strong relationship with the kids, you know, whether it was movie nights through Google Meets, or uh, Among Us competitions or trivia contest, uh, Maddie always had a plan and I have to commend her on her enthusiasm. The limitations she faced this year were pretty formidable and even from time to time when the buy-in from the students wasn't there, she always had a new plan and a new opportunity. Uh, and I know the students appreciated it. I certainly did and the staff always found inspiration from her unending reservoir of positivity. Uh, I know I'm not saying a lot about her academics in this speech, but that would require a whole other three minute video, which we don't have time for. Um, besides, uh, Maddie, I can't think of a greater thing than bringing joy and happiness to people during a difficult time. And that's what you did this year. When students think back on their year of COVID at Sir Winston, you and your leadership are a part of that journey. And that's an impact we're gonna rem remember forever. You stood confidently, you never wavered, and most importantly, you shone a bit of light into your corner of the world. We're better people because of it, and you should be proud of your accomplishments. I thought long and hard about the perfect word I would use to describe your four years at Sir Winston, but I realized I don't have to. Uh, the committee's done it for me, and that word is excellence.
All the best to you, Maddie, as you go forth in your program of Brock and Con Ed. You're owed everything you deserve. Take care and thanks for this opportunity. Good evening. My name is Joanna Provo and I'm the principal of the St. Catharines Collegiate Secondary School. It is my pleasure to congratulate our Excellence in Education winner this year, Alyssa Silva Ferreira. Congratulations, Alyssa, on a job very well done. At this time, I'd like to pass it over to Mrs. Tenhove, who will be speaking on Alyssa's behalf this evening. I am privileged to talk to you today about Alyssa Silva Ferreira, who is St. Catharines Collegiate's Excellence in Education recipient for 2021. Alyssa and her family came to Canada two years ago from Brazil as they recognized the opportunities that Canada would have for the four of them. Despite financial stressors compounded by a global pandemic, Alyssa has never lost sight of her dreams and has held tight to her goals. Over the last two years, Alyssa has shown excellence in her pursuit of honor roll standing, something that she prides herself with having accomplished throughout all her years in school. She has earned 90% plus in her grade 12 university courses. Alyssa joined the ESL program and quickly established herself a leader among her peers. Alyssa was always willing to help out with fellow newcomers to Canada to make them feel welcomed and connected to Collegiate's community. Her quiet, thoughtful demeanor always puts people at ease. Even behind the mask, her kindness and positive energy radiate. And she knows how to smile with her eyes, a smile that lights up her whole face. Since, since childhood, Alyssa has always looked for ways to assist people. She recognizes, these, recognizes the importance of looking out for the greater good and realizes there is much reward to be had. In Brazil, Alyssa volunteered with her mom who worked as a social worker in their church. Alyssa credits these experiences as where she discovered her passion to serve others. In Alyssa's own words, no matter where I am, I always keep in mind that I need to do my best in whatever I am doing, whether at school, at home, volunteering, or in another place. It does not need to be perfect, but giving your best, doing things with your heart, makes all the difference. Alyssa, we could not agree more. Such insightful words. In September, Alyssa will be heading to Redeemer University in Hamilton to study politics and international development. She plans to follow her dream of becoming a lawyer or a human rights advocate with a desire to help ensure that others' basic rights and needs are satisfied. We are confident that Alyssa will make a valuable contribution to our world. To conclude, I would like to take a moment to address Alyssa's family. My apologies if the words don't roll off my tongue since it's my first time dappling in Portuguese. Você tem filos maravilhoso. Desejamos a você muito sucesso em sua vida aqui no Canadá. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Neil Sheard and I'm the principal at Stanford Collegiate. I'm so pleased to be here tonight to honor Gurleen Najjar, our Excellence in Education Award winner. Here to talk about just a few of Gurleen's many accomplishments is Mr. Dave Digitano. Hello and good evening. I'm David Digitano from Stanford Collegiate Secondary School, and it is my honor tonight to recognize and congratulate Gurleen Nijar as she accepts her Excellence in Education Award. Does anyone remember the 2017-2018 school year? I know it's hard to visualize now after the challenging year we've just had, but I remember exactly what I was teaching, thanks to none other than one Gurleen Nijar. Halfway through October of 2017, Gurleen moved from Brampton to Niagara Falls and ended up in my grade 9 business class as our guidance team made sure to match her timetable exactly to her old one. I could tell she was very motivated from day one since she finished her work early and asked, is that it? To which I replied, it is for today, but you've still got things to catch up on from September. Well, within a few days, she was completely caught up including all of the bonus assignments I had posted. That's when I knew what heights she'd achieve before graduating this year. In grade 10, I and Robin McBurney would have the privilege of coaching her and her friend Navidita Sunil while they developed a natural disaster safety app that worked offline for a worldwide programming contest specifically for girls interested in STEM, which was called Technovation. 
They called themselves the Niagara Coders and pitched their idea at the Connect Conference in the spring of 2019. I was thrilled when Gerline signed up to take computer science with me because it's one of my absolute favorite subjects to teach. She used her impressive mathematics skills to solve the lengthy list of problems that I threw her way. She also explored other options in STEM and excelled in physics, accounting, and green industries. She was a regular Envirothon participant and will also be graduating with an Environmental Studies SHSM in just a few weeks. Always an honor roll student, Gerline maintained her high marks while studying for the yearly Waterloo math contests, serving on student council, learning to be a leader and a mentor through Link Crew, and working part-time at Tim Hortons and Zip Line to the Falls. As a math teacher, I will mention that her Waterloo math contest scores were the highest in her grade each year that she wrote. As a technovation coach, I will mention that she pitched a product to a team of industry captains and conquered her stage fright while she was at it. To cap off her years spent learning with the DSBM, Gerline will be attending the prestigious Joseph L. Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto this September to study commerce, a dream that she's had since before she became a Stanford Hornet and part of our family. Congratulations, Gerline, on being this year's Excellence in Education winner at Stanford Collegiate. We're all so very proud of you. I am Karen Ferguson, Principal of Thorold Secondary School. I would like to recognize Maya Conway as our Excellence in Education winner for 2021. To speak to you about Maya this evening is Kella Pendakis, a physical education teacher and coach at Thorold Secondary School. Good evening. I'm truly honored to have the privilege of introducing Thorold Secondary School's Excellence in Education winner, Maya Conway. I can't think of a more deserving young lady. I know that as a teacher, we aren't supposed to say that we have a favorite student, but in truth, Maya has been and always will be one of mine. I've had the privilege of being both her phys ed teacher and volleyball coach for the past four years, and I've watched her flourish as a student, an athlete, and as a person. She is by far one of the most conscientious, ambitious, and kind-hearted students I've ever taught. From the first day of grade nine, Maya truly embraced becoming a Golden Eagle and has exemplified our school motto of seeking the highest in every possible way. Maya has always had a desire to achieve academic excellence and has been on the principal's honor roll every semester since the start of grade nine. She has consistently had the highest overall average for her grade every year of her high school career. In fact, this year she achieved a 97.8%, which is extraordinary considering the learning environment this year's graduating class has been faced with. I can't imagine learning courses like functions, calculus, biology, and chemistry all online but Maya demonstrated, and I will say demonstrated with flair, that it could be done. That's quite an accomplishment. Not only is Maya a diligent student, she's been an active participant throughout high school in many of Thorold's extracurricular activities, including various sports teams, school reach, and youth for change. I know that her coaches would agree when I say that she's always been the hardest working and most dependable player on the team. Her sportsmanship and her desire to compete are admirable. In fact, in both grades 10 and 11, she was awarded the Athlete of the Year. There are reasons why Maya is so special and why she's earned the respect of her teachers and peers alike. Maya's passion and love for her school, her family and friends, and for life itself is, bar none, the best quality she possesses. She makes every effort to make people feel important and can always be counted on to be a leader. I have thoroughly enjoyed being part of your journey, Maya, and I'm going to cherish all the fantastic memories, chats, laughs, and workouts we've shared over the years. I know I speak for everyone at TSS when I wish you all the best at McMaster as you pursue your degree in life sciences. It is said that to succeed in life, you need three things, a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. You, Maya, certainly have all three. In traditional eagle fashion, May you soar through life and always seek the highest. Stay golden, Maya. Good evening, I'm Karen Simpson, Principal at West Lane Secondary School. On behalf of our Spartan community, I would like to congratulate Deanna Barnes as a most deserving recipient for the DSBN Excellence in Education Award. I will now introduce you to Mrs. Barb Warman Purnell, who will share with you the qualities that make Deanna a natural leader and a positive role model among her peers. Congratulations, Deanna, to you and your fellow recipients for achieving personal excellence and for receiving this very prestigious award. 
It is an honor and a privilege to introduce Deanna Barnes as Wesleyan's Excellence in Education winner. I know that her parents, Marilena and Doug, and her sister Victoria are very proud of her achievements. Deanna is a bright light in any classroom. Her positive attitude towards life and learning make her a beacon for other students. They're drawn to her as a natural leader, and her kind and calm nature put everyone at ease. She's had a pretty spectacular academic career at West Lane. She's maintained a 98% average with at least 12 100%, at least because the semester is not over. While achieving these, these, this great success, she has remained a well-rounded student. She's participated and excelled in Wesleyan's music program. Athletics, she was captain of the volleyball team and MVP three years in a row. And also helped coach the boys senior volleyball team. She's also part of a traveling volleyball team and volunteers at her church and has a part-time job as a lifeguard. Deanna came to Wesleyan with a passion for school involvement, leadership, and making people happy. So being part of student council was a great fit for her. Deanna was co-president of student council this past year. Student Council has allowed her to use her organizational skills to create a positive environment for our school community. She's also part of our media team and they transitioned this year from regular announcements to online announcements. When asked to describe Deanna, her peers use words like talented, hardworking, inspirational, kind, friendly, athletic, musical, and she motivates them to strive for success. Her teachers use words like phenomenal, enthusiastic about learning, a role model, a renaissance woman with a smile. I had the pleasure of teaching her chemistry and her work is, in, is beautiful. It's incredibly neat and organized, a real teacher's delight. Everyone at West Lane wishes her the very best next year as she follows her dream to attend Queen's University for in their health sciences program. Congratulations on your success and remember, once a Spartan, always a Spartan. This concludes tonight's celebration. Thank you for joining us and congratulations again to all the recipients. I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's event and I wish you all the best. Good night.